Welcome to the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. Woodworking with an Appalachian flair. Hey, this is Gerald Vance with the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. I just finished a small batch of Appalachian serving trays. Many of you know that I have a kiln and I kiln dry hardwood for myself and others. I take the samples from the kiln, I dimension them, glue them together, and make these serving trays out of them. As you can see, it's live edge. This is ambrosia maple and spalted maple. This is from a maple tree I harvested on my farm. If you notice, it has some laser engraving on it. A woodworking friend of mine has a laser engraver, and I trade him wood for his services. So now that I've got these four completed, let me disassemble this one, and then I'll show you how I put a finish on Appalachian serving tray. Now these serving trays have some very, very beautiful, unique grain, and I want to accentuate the grain. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to apply a coat of Waterlocks sealer, and then after that dries 24 hours, then I'll get, uh, give it a coat of the Waterlocks original satin finish. Need to put my gloves on. Now I'm going to pour this into a bowl. I like to just tilt the can over, bring the bowl up to it. And before I seal it up, give it a little shot of Bloxygen. Now to let you all know, normally I would do this in my finishing booth, but for video purposes, I'm going to do it here at the workbench. I have the front door open, the back door open, and I got a little fan going. So I have a nice breeze, so this is not bad at all. So look how that accentuates the grain. Isn't that beautiful? Now I've got it turned over on some painter's points. and give the back a quick coat. See here's some of that bark inclusion. Make sure I get down in there real good. This is why I like using a rag on an application like this. It's so much easier to get in any of these defects. So much easier to get around the uh, live edge. Some of these uh, serving trays, I have some bark on. And it's easier to get around the bark with a rag than it is with a brush. I assemble this in such a way that you can take it apart if you want to replace the rope handle. I always think of what can go wrong with a project and how to do a repair. Okay, there that is. I'm going to turn that over. Now let me show you what this looks like on some of these other woods. Here's some walnut handles. This stuff really looks good on walnut. Look at that. Really brings out the beauty of the wood. Let's try, here's a piece of ash. You can gather that when I make these, I go to my scrap bin, I go through my scrap bin, I like contrasting woods. Here's a piece of spalted oak. Look at that. Very unique. Doesn't that bring out the beauty of that spalting? And let's do a piece of cherry. Here's an unusual piece of cherry. It's got some iron stain in it. Didn't want to use it for any of my fine woodworking but it really works good for this right here. That's really absorbent. Look at that. That's all there is to applying this finish. Very, very simple. Easy to apply. Easy to repair if you have an issue. I'll give it a coat of the sealer. Let it dry for 24 hours. Give it a second coat of the sealer. Let that dry. Then come back and put the satin finish on it. So let me finish up the rest of these and then we'll come back and I'll show you the product after it's completed. Now the sealer coat's dry and you can see it is really accentuated grain. You can see a little bit of curly here, some spalting, some mineral stains. This is going to turn out really nice. So what I'm going to use for the top coat is the Waterlocks Original Satin Finish. 
Now I've already poured some in a bowl and I've sealed the can up with the Bloxygen. I've preconditioned my brush, so I'm ready to give it a top coat. Let me get my gloves on. Now what this does, this gives it a protective coat. This actually builds up a layer on top of the surface, which helps protect it. The sealer actually soaks into the wood, into the wood fibers. Now I'm going to turn that over very gently. Stuff goes on very easy. It's very thin. So I'll give it two or three coats to give a good protective finish. I want to make sure I don't have any drips or runs on the edges. I want to make sure I get the bark, the live edge. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. And that's all there is to it. So now I'm just going to do the same thing to the other ones. I've got four of them I'm working on. Each one is unique, different. That's what I like about working with this wood. Now that I've given these a coat, I need to give all of these ones. I'll do one to show you how it really brings out the beauty of the grain. This, of course, is walnut. Now this spalted oak is pretty unique. And this really makes that spalting stand out. Look at those zone lines. Contrast in the wood, nature at its best. All right, I'm going to finish the rest of the feet. And I've got two other ones off to the side. And I'll let them dry. And then I'll come back and you can see the final product once it's assembled. Here's the finished Appalachian serving tray. As you can see, the water locks did a great job of enhancing the beauty of the wood. This one is ambrosia maple. This one down here has some nice bark inclusion and a knot. Over here we have some curly maple and spalting. And here we have some beautiful spalting. As you can see, the handles are contrasting wood. This was a fun project using scrap from my shop. If you want any information on the Appalachian serving trays, check out my website, AppalachianHeritageWoodshop.com. <music>